This video will cover the application of Copper Coat to a Moody 31. It will cover some of the problems we faced, including mixing of the product and the correct application rate, and show you the final result a year on. This video picks up after we had prepared the boat, applied five coats of gel shield, and then sanded it smooth. I've detailed that preparation and preparing the keel in another separate video. To start with, we needed to work out how much copper coat was required for a 31 foot Moody. To do this, we split the boat into half metre sections and measured at the hull each of those points. With a bit of maths, that gave us the area of the hull. We then measured the keel as a rectangle and a triangle and multiplied that by two to give us the total keel area. Finally, the rudder was measured as a right angle triangle and a second triangle again multiplied by 2 to get the total area. We calculated the area under the waterline as just over 25 metres squared, which would require 7 litres of copper coat. So we ordered 8 litres to allow for wastage, which was good because the amount we actually used at this stage was 7.5 litres for 5 coats, including the amount used where the support pads had been. To prepare the copper coat, you diligently mix together the resin and the hardener. Then carefully add the copper powder and a small amount of isopropyl alcohol as a thinner. Because we had never applied copper coat before, we decided to enlist the help of a local, well-respected boat builder to guide us through the process. However, the advice we were given was wrong because copper coat is very different to normal paints that boat builders are used to working with. The normal processes and techniques used for thinning and applying paint and varnish do not work the same with copper coat. And we ended up having to apply the copper coat twice because we weren't happy with the finish of the first application. Copper coat is supplied in one litre packs and this table shows the quantity we mixed during our first application. I've changed the colours to show the amount used for each full coat and also shown the amount of thinners that was added to each mix. You can see that towards the end we were adding an awful lot more thinners than the 5% recommended by copper coat. The mixture does get thicker with time, so mixing smaller quantities works better, and we soon switch to half litre mixes. The copper is suspended in the mixture, and according to the manufacturer, adding too much thinners could cause the copper to fall out of suspension, and may have contributed to the poor finish. We also added thinners to the roller trays during application, which again was not recommended by the manufacturer. The first coat is applied thinly, and one litre was easily enough to cover the whole boat, with a little left over. The second and third coats used more, and we mixed one and a half litres with very little left over. After each coat, we waited an hour before applying the next. This table shows the start time for each of the coats and the amount of product used. We had one person on each side of the boat, both working from bow to stern. We swapped sides and did stern to bow on one coat to try and even things out. For the fifth coat, one and a half litres was a bit of a stretch. The more coats that went on, the harder it was to apply thin layers, which is why we ended up adding extra thinners. So, this is what it looked like immediately after the five coats of copper coat. It's also important to keep the copper coat protected from water until it is fully cured, which can be two or three days. And after three days, the copper coat looked like this. You can see it's very streaky with dark and light patches, and it looked considerably different to another boat in the yard which had been copper coated by a different company. To try and understand what was going on, I hooked up a microscope to have a closer look at these patchy areas. Looking at the finish under a microscope is interesting. You can see the balls of copper, but there are these patchy grey areas where the copper doesn't look as bright. Taking a look at the other boat in the yard showed a real difference, with the copper coat appearing much brighter and more consistent. This boat had been copper coated by a company called Simblast. So, what went wrong? Well, I think it comes down to our application methodology. We were advised to apply each coat separately, then wait an hour to apply the next coat, wet on tacky. So the coats were effectively being built up. However, 
copper coat is supposed to form a single homogeneous coat. So each coat should blend into the others. Another problem with applying coats separately was that you had to mix exactly the right amount of product and it encouraged the use of thinners. We decided to reapply the copper coat correctly. To start we sanded the existing copper coat to provide a key and needed 120 grit paper. To apply the copper coat this time we used three people. One person solely assigned to mix up half litre batches, top up the roller trays and replace rollers when needed. From the table you can see we only added one cap of thinners to each mix. We had two people continuously applying copper coat starting at different sides and ends and rotating around the boat and we finished in three hours. The final application looked like this. We didn't re-copper coat the areas under the support pads so we could evaluate the performance compared to the new application. Also the original pad locations had had copper coat applied correctly so also didn't need doing. The finish looked overall a lot more consistent. We had one more problem to contend with, and that was the weather. Unfortunately, rain was forecast for later that day. We used Builder's DPC to provide a skirt around the whole boat, just above the waterline, and then added some tarpaulins to protect the boat from the forecasted wind direction. All this worked well and protected the copper coat from any water runs. Looking at the results under a microscope shows more consistency in the application. It still didn't look quite as golden as the other boat, but you can see the copper balls are evenly distributed. To finish, we burnished the surface to expose the copper. Initially, we used a sander with 500 grit paper. However, this only worked on the high areas and left the lower areas untouched, which was confirmed when we looked under a microscope. We found that scotch bright pads were far better at performing the burnishing as they moulded to the contours and burnished the lower areas as well as the higher areas. You can see the difference very clearly when looking under the microscope as well. The best way we found of doing this was to put the scotch bright pads onto the sander. They stuck really well to the sander's velcro and sped up the process no end. Uh, you can see what it looks like a year later on in the next section and remember to subscribe and like this video if you enjoyed it. Thank you! And this is what it looked like. Now I should point out that for the previous six months the boat had been locked down in a marina. The growth isn't really stuck, it comes off easily when you rub your finger over it. In fact the prop wash from moving the boat to the drying grid cleaned up one area as you can see here. As a comparison you can see the amount of growth there is on the anode. With a jet wash it all cleaned up easily, in fact even a battery powered jet wash worked. However, it was a lot slower than the mains powered one. Finally, we examined the pad areas where we had left the incorrectly applied copper coat. As you can see, the copper coat had still worked and there was not masses of growth. However, the areas did not clean up as well and had this black residue, which didn't shift even after jet washing multiple times. Definitely not as good as the finish on the rest of the boat. Overall, we're really happy with the end result. The boat speed has been great during the last season. It's so much easier just to jet wash rather than anti-foul and it's also great for the environment. Copper coat is a great product when applied the right way.